Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Crooked Horse Rifle and Pistol out of Lamar County, Mississippi. And today, we have the pistol that started all the madness with my love for firearms. Let's go to the bench and see what we got. And this is why you always wear eye protection when shooting at steel targets. That trench going perpendicular to that T-post was not caused by the critters. That was caused by the, the bullet hitting that steel plate and the shrapnel from that bullet it's tearing into that ground. Well, hello there, friends. Ladies, gentlemen, fellow firearms enthusiasts. Welcome back to Crooked Horse Rifle and Pistol out of Mark County, Mississippi. As you can see behind me, we got quite a bit of rain last night and had some pretty good storms come on through. In fact, this is actually take two of uh, you know, this video. As, uh, I was hoping to make it, you know, get a you know, get a video in before the storms come through, uh, came through. And uh, they kind of caught me in mid-production. So, here we are again. Now, I know cry me a river having to go out and shoot some more. But anywho, like I said, the pistol that started it all for me. The Beretta 92 FS. Now before I go into you know the particulars about this pistol, you know, I was gonna share a little bit of history with y'all about it. So the Beretta 92 FS production began in 1976 as the Beretta 92 and would undergo several variations mainly just to meet the needs of various organizations you know, such as law enforcement and military agencies. You know, and that includes both foreign and domestic law enforcement and military. Now, the 92 FS would actually officially enter military service in 1990 and be given the name the M9. In fact, if you served in the armed forces, now, really from 1990 to probably now, you've probably handled this pistol at least once in your military career. In fact, I was issued the M9 when I was in the military, you know, during my 20-year military career. So I know this, know this pistol very, very well. So like I said, the you know, was designated as the M9, chambered in 9mm, and was adopted by the U.S. military officially in 1985. You know, to replace the, the 45 a one or if you were in the Air Force, you know, Air Force always liked to do things, be special and do things separately. You know, they carried the 38 Special. So this pistol here weighs just a little over two pounds unloaded. It has a height of five and a half inches and an overall barrel length of eight and a half inches has a standard magazine capacity of 15 rounds. However, there's other you no know, aftermarket magazines, you know, with the, you know, a much uh, higher magazine capacity. So let's uh, put some rounds in this thing and see if we can't hit anything. So we're going to have to just shoot a little bit past the firing line 
Now where I normally stand is turned into a mud puddle. For the ammunition we're using, this is 124 grain blazer from by CCI. So, who knows? I might hit something. Let me wipe these bullets off right quick. No sense in wasting good ammunition. So had a couple issues there. Was it ammunition related or anything like that? Uh, you know this. Uh, you know this pistol's over 30 years old, and uh, well, I've had it close to 30 years, I should say. And you know these are the original magazines with it too. I'm gonna go grab another magazine real quick. So I managed to hit a few targets, including one out there at 60 meters. Let's go back to the bench and talk a little more about this pistol. Y'all probably wouldn't believe me if I told you I was consistently hitting that 80 meter target out there <laughs> yesterday when I was filming this or attempting to film this. Anyway. You know, some features about this piston, the Beretta 9 the TUFS, also referred to as the M9, is, you know, one of the things that the government was looking for, what they wanted Beretta to, you know, to offer, was 100% parts interchangeability. In other words, if I was to take this pistol apart, completely strip it down to the bare minimum, they mix it in with a bunch of parts from similar, you know, other pistols, you know, of the, of the, of the 92 FS. You should be able to 
Just pull parts out, reassemble the pistol, and have a fully functioning pistol. 100% interchangeability. Other features they wanted was the curved grip. As you see here, kind of similar to how, you know, almost similar to a 1911. And we also have the squared off trigger guard there. Now, some people say it's squared off to, you know, for easy, you know, better shooting. You know, however, there's also allegedly the, you know, one of the uh, uh, folks with the, one of the, the, the collaborators with Beretta said that actually having your finger like this was incorrect. We also have the chrome bar a chrome barrel and that was done to reduce corrosion and also reduce wear. <clears throat> now early on now there were some quality you know quality issues raised now which uh, likely were the result of the ammo that the army was using during its field trials and there's also you know some issues uh, some reported issues with the M9 uh, you know during the you know the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan however those issues were likely the result of uh, you know the aftermarket magazines that uh, you know the military was using uh, instead of going purchasing the magazines from from Beretta, they went with Metgar magazines, you know, for for a time, and then they went with another uh, manufacturer. And apparently, those magazines just weren't uh, quite up to snuff, if you will. So the services. They stuck with it, you know, with the M9 for quite some time. However, I think is what, 2000, around 2018, you know, services were looking for, you know, a pistol that uh, was more modular based and also, you know, uh, you know more lightweight. You know, so they would, uh, yeah, so they would end up replacing the M9 with the SIG P320 and giving the nomenclature the M17 and the M18. Now when it comes to weight, like I said, that you know the Beretta unloads just over two pounds where a SIG P320 is about a pound and three quarters. Now that may not seem like a lot, but when you're carrying this pistol and all of it, you know, in you know, a full complement of ammunition, you know, weight makes all the difference. This pistol I've had for almost 30 years. And like I said, these are the original magazines. Springs probably need to be, you know, no, probably the springs definitely need to be replaced. Which is probably the reason for the misfeeding. So, let's do some more shooting. Who knows, might be able to hit something. Sixty. 
Stovepipe, maybe. again. Not so if you notice that, but I forgot to put my hair, my eye protection on. Next time, remind me. So if you're looking to purchase maybe one of these, they are still avail readily available in the, you know, in the commercial market, even though the military is no longer going to be using them. They are still readily available out on the commercial market for the basic bare bones 92FS model. You probably look on to spend around $700 on your local big box sporting goods store. Now, if you're not looking to spend that kind of money and are still interested in, you know, the, the 92 FS platform, there are clones out there uh, that, that are available for purchase. Taurus makes a clone as well as Gerson, and those go for, you know, a few hundred dollars less. But overall for me, you know, if I was to, you know, if I was in the market to buy a gun and I didn't already have one of these, quite honestly, I'd probably pass on it. You know, the main reason it, it is not a, uh, this is not something I would ever consider to carry concealed just because of the weight alone. You know, in addition to the size, but like I said, mainly due to the weight. You know, if you want to carry a full size gun con uh, concealed, there's certainly a lot better options in the, on the market. Um, but for me, I've held on to this gun just mainly because, you know, it's my first gun. It's also something, you know, um, intimately familiar with. I just got to get some new mag, you know, get some new magazine springs. I mean, probably... And yeah, probably just buy some new magazines all together. Because these are definitely worn out. And worn out magazines can, you know, that's a hazard. So I'm going to do the right thing and get that taken care of. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for coming out to Crooked Horse Life and Pistol out of Mara County, Mississippi. You know, for take two <laughs> of the bread of 92 FS. I want to check to see if I still have that, uh, you know, them video clips of me pinging that 80 meter target out there because I know none of y'all going to believe me if I told you. It's like saying I went fishing and caught a fish this big. I've done that too before, too. Redfish. So, ladies and gentlemen, friends fellow firearms enthusiasts again thank you for coming out crooked horse rifle and pistol out of the mark county mississippi and until the next time thank you for shooting with us <sighs> yep. 
I wonder if Hickok 45, an honest outlaw, have to pick up their own brass. Good times.